in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather to welcome Christ, the risen Lord, as we listen to his word and as we break the bread of the Eucharist. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we humbly acknowledge our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to new life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who restore human nature to yet greater dignity than at its beginnings, look upon the amazing mystery of your loving kindness, and in those you have chosen to make new through the wonder of rebirth, may you preserve the gifts of your enduring grace and blessing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and his friends went by sea from Paphos to Perga in Pamphylia, where John left them to go back to Jerusalem. The others carried on from Perga till they reached Antioch in Pisidia. Here they went to the synagogue on the Sabbath and took their seats. After the lessons from the law and the prophets had been read, the presidents of the synagogue sent them a message. Brothers, if you would like to address some words of encouragement to the congregation, please do so. Paul stood up, held up a hand for silence, and began to speak. Men of Israel and fearers of God, listen. The God of our nation Israel chose our ancestors and made our people great when they were living as foreigners in Egypt. Then, by divine power, he led them out and for about 40 years took care of them in the wilderness. When he had destroyed seven nations in Canaan, he put them in possession of their land for about 450 years. After this, he gave them judges down from the prophet Samuel. Then they demanded a king, and God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin. After 40 years, he deposed him and made David their king, of whom he approved in these words, I have selected David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will carry out my whole purpose. To keep his promise, God has raised up for Israel one of David's descendants, Jesus our, our Savior, whose coming was heralded by John when he proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the whole people of Israel. Before John ended his career, he said, I am not the one you imagine me to be. That one is coming after me, and I am not fit to undo his sandal. The word of the Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Through all ages my mouth will proclaim your truth. Of this I am sure that your love lasts forever, that your truth is firmly established as the heavens. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil anointed him. My hand shall always be with him, and my arm shall make him strong. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My truth and my love shall be with him. By my name his might shall be exalted. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, 
the rock who saves me. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You, O Christ, are the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. You have loved us and have washed away our sins with your blood. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After he had washed the feet of his disciples, Jesus said to them, I tell you most solemnly, no servant is greater than his master. No messenger is greater than the man who sent him. Now that you know this, happiness will be yours if you behave accordingly. I am not speaking about all of you. I know the ones I have chosen, but what scripture says must be fulfilled. Someone who shares my table rebels against me. I tell you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you may believe that I am he. I tell you most solemnly, whoever welcomes the one I send welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Beginning today, right through to Pentecost itself, we'll be listening to passages which are taken from chapters 13 to 17 in John's Gospel. These chapters are the reflections of Jesus following the washing of feet, as we heard at the beginning of today's Gospel, right through to the great priestly prayer of Jesus before he then is arrested and the crucifixion, and then the resurrection take place. In today's passage, flowing on from the washing of feet and the words Jesus spoke to the disciples afterwards, Jesus speaks about being like the master. The servant should be like the master. The messenger is not greater than the one who sent him. Jesus was about to offer his life for the salvation of humanity. He was about to be the servant, offering himself for all. And he speaks to his disciples that they too are to be servants. They too are to express that same love, that same concern, that same goodness towards other people that he himself, as the Word incarnate, was going to manifest through his own death on the cross. They are to be like he is. And then he also says, I tell you most solemnly, whoever welcomes the one I send welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. This is the great calling of every disciple, to bring the message of God's love to others, to proclaim the good news of our salvation. And anyone who welcomes that good news is welcoming Christ. And by welcoming Christ is welcoming God himself into the midst of their lives. This is that great mystery at the heart of the proclamation of the gospel. For when we hear the word, we are healing, hearing the voice of God. When we accept the word, we are accepting God. We are accepting Christ, the word made flesh into our lives. The word brings the reality of God's presence into our hearts, into our lives. And this is the great calling we all have, to bring that good news, to bring the word of God, to bring Christ to others, to enable others to open their hearts, to experience the loving and healing and transforming presence of Christ. We are now those disciples sent as messengers by Christ himself, We are the ones who enable others to welcome Christ, to hear his voice, 
to embrace the loving presence of God into their lives. May we continue to be that missionary, evangelizing, outreaching church. And may we each, every one of us, take Christ, take the good news, take the living presence of God, and enable others to be touched by that same loving presence of God, by Christ himself, who has touched our lives and is transforming them. Let us turn to our loving Father through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and bring our prayer. Let us pray for the church across the world that it truly be an evangelizing, a missionary church, bringing Christ and the good news of Christ to others. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for peace wherever there is conflict and violence. We pray that the good news of healing and of love may prevail over the hatred that some are experiencing in their communities torn apart by violence. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the sick in our hospitals and homes and all who care for them. We pray for God's healing grace to be present in the love and care shown. Lord, in your mercy, we pray too for the church of St. Anthony and the parishioners attending that church. We pray for the parish priest, Father Paul O'Hara. We pray that they indeed will embrace the good news of salvation and proclaim it gladly to others. Lord, in your mercy, and we pray too for our departed brothers and sisters that they rest in the eternal peace of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate and loving Father, hear the prayer we make with uplifted hearts through Jesus Christ, the eternal high priest who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. 
for with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ralph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour forth into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Regina Celi Laetare, Alleluia. Quia quem meruisti portare, Alleluia. Resurrexit sicud dixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia. Saint John of Beverly, pray for us. <laughs> 